Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Meet Firebase, where you get to meet the Googlers that make Firebase happen. My name is Doug Stevenson, and I just had a yelling match with Nate. So my voice is a little bit hoarse. Thanks for hanging with me on that. Today on the show, we have Lauren Law. Lauren? Hey. Thanks for being on the show. Great to be here, thanks for having me. Tell me, what do you do on the Firebase team? I work on Cloud Functions for Firebase, which we just launched at Google Cloud Next. So it's our newest product. It allows you to do custom server logic in response to events happening in your app. A lot of developers have been waiting for Cloud Functions. Yeah, number one request. feature. There's a lot of excitement over it. Yeah. I know Nate is jazzed for one. <laughs> So tell me briefly, how are developers using that in their mobile apps? Yeah, so they're using it to replace things they used to have a server for, such as custom authentication, sending push notifications to mobile apps, or resizing a thumbnail image after it gets uploaded. It sounds like things that people have been doing with their own custom server. They no longer need that. Exactly. And they can just deploy their code to the Google Cloud yep. and just replace all it their... It runs when it needs to, shuts down when it doesn't need to run. Hmm. That's great. I want to ask you more about Cloud Functions later. Sure. But first, I would love to know, where are you from? Yeah, so I was born and raised in China in a city called Shenyang in the northeast in the Liaoning province. When I was 10, my family moved to Toronto, Canada, and I've been there since um, until I moved here for Google about nine months ago. Tell me, what's unique about the place uh, in China where you grew up? It is very cold during the winters and very hot during the summers, but we are reputed to have the best dumplings in the country. Can you get soup dumplings there? That's what I want to uh, know. No, soup dumplings are actually from Shanghai. Oh. They're actually slightly different than the dumplings I'm talking about. I'm talking about the ones that are boiled and served after being boiled. I like all the dumplings. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be sure so. to get dumplings if I ever visit them. Yes, you should. So uh, you said you moved to Canada, and you went to school there too, yes. didn't you? What was your major? So I studied at Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario, and I studied biomedical computing. Biomedical computing? So yeah. that's kind of a rare path to take. How did you, yeah, how did you land there? So I first went into university wanting to become a doctor because my mother was one and I took computer science as an elective and it was the course I put the least amount of work in, got the highest mark in, so I thought this is great, I should do more courses like this. Uh, so in second year I switched into biomedical computing, still wanted to get into med school, uh, but later on I took the full plunge, realized programming was actually what was for me. But your learning didn't stop there, you got into this program called the Recurse Center. Tell me what that's all about. Yeah, so I did that a few years after graduation, is a three-month full-time programming retreat where people that already know how to program come to do things they've always wanted to spend time tinkering with. So I just dabbled in a whole bunch of things, actually built a project very similar to Firebase before I discovered what Firebase was. It's very hands-on, practical, get your hands dirty kind of learning. Oh, that's great. I always like learning by doing projects as right. well. And I think it's very effective for people when they get into Google. I'm kind of curious how you decided to apply to Google. That's a good question. I wanted to join Google because I wanted the opposite of what I had done before to get a taste of something different. So I had my own company. I then worked at another startup as a project Product manager. So I was looking for a company that had a lot of mentorship, support structures, a lot of training opportunities, and Google came out on top when I looked at those kind of uh, criteria. So you've been working on the Cloud Functions team, like you said. Uh, what parts of that specifically have you been working on? Yeah, so I work with the part closest to developers, <laughs> which I'm very happy about. I work at the command line interface, the CLI, as well as the SDK that developers use when writing Cloud Functions. Okay, so it sounds like for those of you at home who have done a Firebase deploy command to get your code up into Google's cloud. Yeah. That is something Lauren worked on, and so you exactly. were using her software uh, yeah. when you do that. So yeah. uh, that's great. So I'm sure the rest of the team is glad you joined to make that possible. And I understand that some others on the team and you do some extracurricular activities like yes. dancing. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. And I think we have some video of that that we'd like to show everyone. <laughs> So what kind of dancing do you do? I've recently been doing a lot of swing dancing uh, with a lot of members of the Firebase team. I also do salsa sometimes. I've done Chinese folk dancing when I was young. Where do you do dancing around here? I sometimes do it at Google. I recently checked out uh, the Argentine tango class, which was a lot of fun. And uh, other times I find different spots around the city. Who are you dancing with in that clip that we just saw? Uh, so that clip was Andrew Lee, one of the co-founders of Firebase. 
and he currently manages the engineering team in San Francisco. I don't dance really well at all, but I enjoyed <laughs> watching. I'm glad. Like other guests who have been on the show, you also enjoy travel. Yes. So what have been some of your favorite destinations? Yeah, so I went to Peru a few years ago, and I did a five-day trek to Machu Picchu called the Salkante Trek. That was probably one of my favorites. Okay, what was that like? That sounds pretty intense. Yeah, uh, so it was very intense. First time I've ever done anything like that. And on the first night, it actually started raining while I was hiking. And I was wearing a down jacket because it was uh, about freezing temperature. And the jacket got wet. Uh, and it was my only warm jacket. <laughs> so I had to hang it outside my tent to dry and tie it up in hopes it wouldn't fly away. And wow. it did dry the next day, thankfully. Well, that's good. So speaking of adverse weather conditions, okay. you've also spent some time in the Arctic. Uh, yeah, I seem, I seem to gravitate towards cold places. <laughs> <Certainly>. <laughs> so I was there volunteering for a summer during my university years, and I was running literacy camps for kids and youth living in Baker Lake, Nunavut in Canada. And it was a community of about 2,000 people. We were running camps that were fun, that taught kids how to read, how to write, how to keep learning on their own. Okay, so that's, that was more than just travel. You actually had a mission or a purpose Absolutely. in that. Oh, so how long were you there again? Two and a half months. Two and a half months. So you, so you lived in that community and sort of just existed with them. I did, yes. I got to even go to a local wedding. That was a lot of fun. They had some holidays that they were celebrating. Got to go see their little parades on the street and they were playing these games in the community center. Um, even went hunting with a family uh, out in the land. We drove out for a few hours and then didn't actually catch anything. <laughs> but it was a good experience. Yeah, it sounds like quite the experience. I've never done anything like that. <laughs> now, I want to circle back to uh, Cloud Functions. Sure. Um, right now, Cloud Functions only supports JavaScript for the Node environment. Is that right? Uh, as well as TypeScript. You can and also TypeScript. write in TypeScript. Okay. And I know that the team would love to support more languages in the yeah. future. But today, I'd mm -hmm. like to play a little game with you. I would like to quiz you on your knowledge of various programming languages. Ooh, okay. okay. So the way it's going to work is I have a tablet, and there are samples of code on here. What I want you to do is uh, read the function and tell me what language it's written in. All right. So here we've got public static void. That is uh, Java. That is definitely Java, yes. Okay, great. Next one. Um, so this one's short. Uh, def tells me that it is Python. That's right, Python. All right, Python. next question. So this one, we've got the char star. That's either C or C++. I'm trying to think. I think printf is C. Yeah, C. Okay, All right, good. Okay. Next one. Oh. <laughs> I have never seen this one before. It's a lot of parentheses in there. Maybe it's a functional language? It could be considered a functional language, yes. Is it Elixir? Mm, not quite. This is, is, this it is actually Haskell? No. <laughs> it's actually Common Lisp. So oh, the Parentheses kind of give that away if you know okay. that family of languages. OK, let's move on to the next one. All right, get a def and an end and a puts. We're getting into the realm of scripting languages now. Oh, is this Perl? No. Mm. That's a scripting language. <laughs> that's okay, I'll just give it to you. Okay. So this this one is Ruby, actually. Oh, I do not know Ruby. Yeah, that's okay. So uh, <laughs> let's move on to the next one. So here you are importing something, and then funk is how you declare it. Oh, it's Go. It is Go. Yes. That's correct. Good job. <laughs> I got that because of the variable name and then the type afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, dev hello unit equals print line. Uh, I'll give you a hint, it's a JVM language. <laughs> the only JVM language I know is Java. <laughs> <laughs> this one is Scala. So, oh, it's a yeah, Scala. They're, they're getting okay. kind of tricky now. Gotcha. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay. I got a sub thing. This is some really low level thing stuff. Oh no, this is uh, this is also oh, no? a scripting language. Oh. I have no idea. This, <laughs> one, this one is actually Perl this time. This is yeah. Perl. Yeah, okay. the dollar signs in front of the variable names give that gotcha, one away. Gotcha. And the last one, and I don't think either of us have written a line in, in this one. This one's kind of tricky. So why would you capitalize everything? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's you know the convention of some languages, right? Oh, is this Visual Studio? This is Visual Basic. Yes. Visual Basic. Sorry, yes, yeah, that would be the yeah. ID. Yeah. We Visual don't do Basic. so much of that here at Google, but uh, uh, good job on the game. And thanks for being on the show, Lauren. Thanks, Doug. It's been fun. And thank you for uh, tuning in to meet Firebase. Yes. If you want to subscribe to more video content, you can do that right here on the Firebase channel on YouTube by clicking the subscribe button. And uh, you should go check out Cloud Functions for Firebase, yes. where Lauren has made a big impact. And I'll see you next time on Meet Firebase.